I'm back with another video. Today we got Greek guys explained in 12 minutes. It's on both screens. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. The world began with several primordial beings. First came Chaos, then Gaia, Earth, and finally Eros, Love. From Gaia there came Uranus, Heaven, who both created the Titans. Uranus disliked his children and locked them deep within the Earth. Gaia, sick of having her children imprisoned, made a great sickle that she gave to her son Cronus. Cronus hid until Uranus came to lie with his mother then leapt out and sliced off his father's genitals, which fell into the sea. Cronus proceeded to release his fellow titans from prison, and so the age of the titans began. Cronus married the titan Rhea, who gave birth to most of the major gods. Cronus, scared by a prophecy that his children would take his power, imprisoned them as soon as they were born. Look at this picture right here. This still goes on to this day. After all, more than 800,000 children go missing in the U.S. alone annually. So imagine all the countries come back with their annual salary or what they brought in money from kids going missing. Lucrative would be an understatement. This would be a multi-billion dollar business. For example, um, Let's say one neuromelanated child. You torture them while they're alive. It's a fluid, a substance, an adrenaline that's extracted from the victim. When they're at a height of, of fear, like in fear and scare and darkness, they extract the substance from the individual. To, make, um, to have adrenochrome. So after that, however, they extract the neuromelanin. I mean, after all, melanin is worth more than gold and silver on the market. So it's like you extract that somehow. You can purchase them on the dark web, IP encrypted, and just experiment on one alive or not. You can fulfill all your weird fetishes, incest, molestation, bestiality, or whatever. You can, if you don't want to kill them, you can groom them into being a perfect mate for you or to someone that will grow up to be violent and do to someone else that was done to them. You can groom them. You can get them hooked on drugs and have however many powerful, rich, weird men sleep and do whatever they want to do with this individual. And you can have them in a torture room. You seen the Quentin Tarantino movie, um, Hostel? It's a real thing. Some people, they quench their thirst, if you will. So what stimulate you doesn't stimulate them. So they need to do something that would Hell, damn crazy it is. It's insane. So just imagine that just one child, one neuromelanated melanated being, what you can do and how much money you can make. And, and when you render the victim useless, you can skin them alive, flaying, and make human skin purses and pocketbooks and hats, which is a real thing, and it still goes on to this day. It can be someone that's rich and powerful in a position. His kid is born with a condition and his vital organs is useless, pretty much. Can purchase one of these kids. If it ain't none on the market, I feel like it always will be if it ain't though. You can get your kid sniped, take the body and get the organs and put it in his kid. He feel he's better than you and his kid better than you too. You're an ant. Life really like that. You remember the Kendrick Johnson incidents rolled up in a gym mat somehow? Camera footage deleted, power people, powerful people in position, made it look away, and it's wasn't even really investigated. 
unless the people investigate themselves they'll never investigate themselves then they will be locking themselves up so just just think of that of those and i'm pretty sure you can think of more as well just with one person look what you can do so imagine that 800,000 annually in the United States alone and they getting auctioned off in all different kind of places for all different kind of reasons. Some are being groomed and they're not killing them. Some they are killing them. Some they fulfilling whatever they fetishes is. Some just want to make human couches. Some just like the torture and got the money and means to pay for it. Um, yeah, it's a sad thing. Shit goes on and we occupy with an occupation a job it is just over broke once more job is defined as public business for private dishonest gain why you think you're making an honest living is someone behind the scenes privately eating private parts and gaining dishonestly off your hard work and labor but this is very real this is insane but let's continue swallowing them whole Rhea pleaded to Gaia for help who, taking pity, hid ah, Zeus yeah. after he was born on Mount Ida in Crete. When Cronus came to eat his son, Rhea fed him a stone instead, tricking the Titan. Gaia. Okay, I know Gaia is the planet, right? What are you. If you know already, if I was to have a daughter, I would name her Ida or Anax in a month. I just feel a connection from them names. Like, I grew up on The Mummy Return. My grandma put me onto that movie. And Ida, it just is something about that. But I ain't know this is. I know everything is derivative some, from somewhere else, but. Okay, I gotta do more research on this name, Ida. Ida. Let's continue. I raised Zeus until he was strong enough to take on his father. The two fought, and upon defeat, Cronus was forced to release Zeus's siblings, starting the war between the gods and the titans. The war lasted 12 years until Zeus freed the Cyclopses and the hundred-headed giants whom Cronus had imprisoned. The Cyclopses gifted Zeus his Cyclops. famous thunderbolt, Poseidon his trident, and Hades That's a hat of darkness, one, uh... tipping the balance of battle. The titans, defeated, were thrown into Tartarus, a prison deep within the underworld, and so started the reign of the gods. Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades decided to share power, drawing lots to decide what they would rule over. Zeus got the sky, Poseidon the seas, and Hades the dead. Zeus, king of the gods, ruled from his throne on Mount Olympus, home of the immortals, often using his symbols of the thunderbolt and eagle to warn or encourage mortals. Zeus was responsible for all weather changes, from lightning to snow, depending on his mood. He was also protector of the home and strangers, meaning being a bad host could land you in deep trouble. Zeus married his sister Hera, who birthed the gods Ares and Hephaestus. Zeus was also infamous for his many affairs with other goddesses, from which Athena, Hermes, Apollo, Artemis and Persephone came. He also engaged in many affairs with mortal women, where he created the god Dionysus, and many heroes like Perseus and Hercules, most of whom experienced the wrath of a jealous Hera. Poseidon, one of the most powerful gods, ruled the sea, Poseidon's created earthquakes, trident. and was the god of horses, much prized in ancient society. He had a palace on Mount Olympus, but an even more magnificent one under the sea, where he spent most of his time. Sailors would have to pray to Poseidon and offer sufficient sacrifice, otherwise risk a painful death at sea. It was very unwise to cross Poseidon, as he held a grudge and could deal out very harsh punishments. In the story of Theseus and the Minotaur, King Minos rules over the island Crete. Minotaur. Yo, this is, again, this is, it's interesting. That's how you know. I mean, it's nothing new under the sun. All you can do is grasp something from the Akashic Records that already exists. A thousand times over how you can possibly do it, think it, say it, it's been done. Um, but how I came to the conclusion that this, a lot of people may look at it in a metaphorical or allegorical way, but no, this is, this is the things they sing in these days. 
I know this is um Greek mythology. Um But when you got you looking at the hieroglyphs, the rune stones and Romanas and all that and all the old carvings on these stones and like the the goddess Bestet in ancient Egypt or ancient Kemet. She pretty much have a female body, but a cat head. And then she have like a little extension, a reminder of herself here as well that was worshipped as well, being the cats that's on all fours. I know they ain't just draw that on them hieroglyphs for no reason. And like the guy with the ibis head, one with the, I think a falcon head. It's one with a tiger head. They drew the things that they seen. And it makes sense. I'm pretty sure a lot of us, for the most part, know reptilians. Well, they will rep till the end. And it's a real thing. They already... They, they took over the government. They the ones that's really pulling the strings, it seems. And they stand up straight like a human with two legs, two arms. And they have a extension of themselves as well. Being uh, lizards out in nature, much smaller on all fours. But isn't the crocodile a form of reptile as well? Or even dinosaurs or even dragons? A lot of people still think dragons was just conjured up and drawn. Nah, it's a real thing. You can't think of nothing that doesn't already exist in the Akashic Records. The Chinese zodiac sign, all 12 zodiac sign, but you think one out of all 12, you think one out of there is fake being a dragon. No, it's real. It's very real. You got to think we're all in the circumference. We're all in this gyroscope. Scope. And on the outskirts, the ice walls in Antarctica and beyond, it's all kind of things. Giant sea monsters, narwhals, dinosaurs still possibly, dragons as well, fairies, small people, giants, Nephilim, Anakim, greys, Nordics, tall whites, Pleiadians, mermaids, sirens, man-maids, centaurs, all these things exist. After all, you do have a reptilian part of your brain. And this reptilian to stand up straight like us have smaller extensions of itself like the actual reptile in nature. So why would the best that be fake? The goddess of ancient Kemet on the carvings with a cat here and a woman body. And then we got the smaller extension of her being a cat that's on all fours. We know the reptilian's real. We know that's real as well. So gene editing, CRISPR cast now, all this kind of been going on for a long time. It may have been called something different, even in a different language. Nonetheless, you're getting at the same thing. This is this was actually, these actually was amongst them. It's a lot of truth in mythology as well. Um, I guess y'all always had little dicks. No ditty. Let's continue. <laughs> Every year he sacrificed his best bull to Poseidon. One year he withheld his favorite oh, bull, a huge white animal. Poseidon noticed, but instead of punishing Minos directly, he decided to target his wife. He made her fall in love with the bull, which eventually led to the birth of the half-man, half-bull creature called the Minotaur. Hades, the oldest Minotaur. of the brothers, ruled over the underworld, where the spirits of the dead resided. Yo, let me know in the comment section what you think. Do that make sense to you? I know, for the most part, as a collective, the collective conscious, we know reptilians is a real thing that can walk around and assume human form. It's not necessarily they change. In fact, they change your perception, what you see. They match your frequency, and you see a human-like figure. But they walk on all fours, and they got a smaller extension of themselves. So why would a cat be fake? They got a woman's body and a cat here, and a smaller extension of herself being a cat, or a lion as well. It's very real. Centaur is very real. Some people may call it a genetic abomination simply because they don't understand it. It may look crazy, so they just might deem it an abomination or evil demonica of the devil, but that's interesting. Let me know if you think it's still fake or these people in ancient times had wild imaginations.
And again, I'm not referring to this video in specific. I know there's Greek mythology and the key word right there is myth, even though a lot of myths is real. Some of it may be exaggerated, or well, a lot of it. But on the hieroglyphs of ancient Kemet, it's really there. Do that still fall under the umbrella of mythology as well, though? But I know it to be real. It's, it's a vibration, a frequency you feel like it's, it's very real. Let's continue, though. He shared his throne with his wife, Persephone, and the two were considered to be gods of fertility. The underworld had several guardians and trials, making underworld. it difficult for the dead and near impossible for the living to enter. The gates lay past the deadly river Styx. The only way to enter was to get passage from the ferryman, Charon. Charon required payment, and this is the reason why Greek burials included placing coins on the eyes of the deceased. If the soul could not afford to enter, then they were fated to wait on the shores of the Styx forever. Past Charon lay Cerberus, the fabled three-headed dog who guards the gates of the underworld. Ultimately, the soul will reach the three judges of the underworld who decide where it should go. They can choose Elysium, the fields of Asphodel, or Tartarus. What is the three-headed dog called? I know about the um, the Chimera. Isn't the Chimera a uh one with the snake head snake head uh, I gotta freshen up I gotta freshen up on this stuff I don't, I don't remember Chimera. Elysium is akin to heaven a peaceful place where the souls of heroes demigods and especially good mortals reside the Asphodel Meadows is the place for ordinary folk who did not achieve anything notable in life good or evil Tartarus is very similar to Hell, and contains not only the Titans, but also criminals who upset the gods, who are tortured for eternity. Hera, sister and wife of Zeus, and queen- Tur Tortured for eternity. Now go and do the etymology of eternity, and leave it in the comment section. Queen of the gods was the protector of marriage and women. She was deeply respected in Greek society. Are you having trouble trying to keep up with your professor? You've got to try Otter. Here's how it works. She was one of the most vengeful and spiteful gods, punishing women who lay with her husband and any subsequent children. When Leto was pregnant with Apollo and Artemis, Hera stopped her giving birth. She kept Io, she another of Zeus's mistresses, as a heavier, up. and had her guarded by the hundred-eyed monster, Argos. A famous tale of her jealous vengeance is the story of Hercules. Hercules was an illegitimate child of Zeus. Hera sent serpents to kill the future hero when he was just a child, but the demigod crushed the creatures with his bare hands. She later drove him to madness, making him kill his wife and children, the event that sent him on his twelve labours. Athena, goddess of wisdom and war, the child of Zeus and Metis, was not born in a conventional way. Zeus received an omen that their children would take the throne from him, and so swallowed Metis while she was pregnant. After this, Zeus began to get a terrible headache. He asked a fellow immortal, thought to be Hephaestus, to split his head open with an axe. Athena was then born from his forehead, jumping out in full battle gear while letting out a war cry. Athena had an affinity for heroics, coming to the aid of heroes like Perseus and Hercules. Her favourite was Odysseus, who she worked hard to keep safe so he could return to his homeland. Athena was highly revered in Athens, which was named after her. She competed with Poseidon for the city, both of whom attempted to give it the best gift. Poseidon struck the ground with his trident, making a stream of water rise up. Athena kicked the earth and caused the first olive tree to emerge. The gods deemed Athena victorious, and the city took her name. Athena was also one of the sacred virgin goddesses, and so, in her honour, the temple built on the Acropolis in Athens was named the Parthenon, which comes from Parthenos, meaning the virgin. Ares was the bloodthirsty and cruel god of war. Neither god nor mortal particularly liked Ares. The warfare he represents is not honourable nor heroic, but rather the primal rage and bloodshed of the battlefield. Ares had a relationship with the goddess Aphrodite, who was married to the god Hephaestus. The two would sleep together whenever her husband was away. When Hephaestus found out, he made an invisible net and hung it over his bed, then told his wife he was going away. 
He hid, and as soon as Ares and Aphrodite got into bed together, they were trapped in the net and unable to move. Hephaestus called upon all the gods, inviting them to see the two naked immortals trapped in the net. Laughter burst out everywhere, and it was only due to the intervention of Poseidon that they were released. Aphrodite was the goddess of beauty and love, responsible for sexual attraction in both mortal and immortal alike, often using her powers for her own amusement. Accounts of her birth vary, with her either being born from the genitals of Uranus or as another illegitimate child of Zeus. Aphrodite had a pivotal role in the Trojan War when Prince Paris of Troy was tasked with giving an apple to the fairest goddess, Hera, Athena or Aphrodite, each promising him something different in return. Paris chose Aphrodite, who promised him the most beautiful woman in the world, Helen. Helen was married to the king of Sparta, Menelaus. Aphrodite put Helen under a spell when Paris came to visit Sparta, making her run away with him. King Menelaus and his brother Agamemnon raised a massive army to go take Helen back from Troy, and so started the Trojan War. Goddess of the Hunt and twin sister of Apollo, Artemis was a deadly archer and an important member of Olympus. She watched over That's hunters like as well as their prey, ensuring the wilderness was kept in check. Artemis is also prized for her virginity and guarded it jealously. The hunter Acteon once stumbled upon her naked as she was bathing. Artemis proceeded to change the man into a deer and set his 50 hunting dogs upon him, giving him a painful death for his mistake. Twin brother of Artemis, Apollo was a god of many things. He was a god of archery, but also of light and music, seen with a lyre as much as a bow. Apollo is closely linked with prophecy. He was born on Delos and honoured the island by setting up an oracle there. He later travelled to Mount Parnassus and slew the great snake Pytho. He created a temple where he had achieved the feat, marking the foundations for where the famous Oracle of Delphi would reside. Hermes, the messenger god and patron of thieves. Known as a trickster amongst the gods, he often pulled pranks and stole from his fellow divinities. When he came of age, he assumed the role of messenger, taking a golden rod with him as a mark of his authority. He is often seen with a winged helmet and sandals, which he used to fly around and deliver messages. Demeter, the goddess of farming and watcher of the harvest. The one thing she prized more than anything else was her daughter, Persephone. It happened that Hades was also interested in Persephone, as he had fallen in love with her. One day, while the girl was picking flowers, he opened up the ground and dragged her down to the underworld. Demeter was distraught when she found out, and searched for her daughter for nine days and nights, until the sun god Helios revealed her captor's identity. Demeter locked herself indoors for an entire year, refusing to come out until Persephone was returned. Without the goddess of farming, the world went into famine. In order to save the world, Zeus ordered Hades to release Persephone. Hades had fed the girl the food of the dead, a pomegranate, meaning that she was bound to him. After much discussion, Zeus decided that Hades could have Persephone for three months of the year, and Demeter could have her for the other nine months. This explains why the winter months are cold and the plants die, as Demeter waits for her daughter to return. God of smithing, Hephaestus had a difficult start to life. He was born lame, and so his mother Hera decided to throw him off Olympus into the sea to drown. He later returned to the home of the gods and was given Aphrodite as a wife by Hera to reconcile with him. He was a great inventor and fashioned many of the palaces on Olympus. He also fashioned the equipment of many heroes, such as Achilles, whom he created armour and a magnificent shield for. God of wine and parties, Dionysus was perhaps the most fun of the Olympians. Frenzied women called Maenads and half-goat men called satyrs followed him. He had a huge cult following in Greece, where his followers would participate in mass drinking and the orgies his mythological companions were so well known for. The Greek gods represent humanity at its best and worst. From the violent and destructive Ares to the beautiful and seductive Aphrodite, Greek mythology demonstrates the epic power struggle between parents and children in an endless quest to gain control over the world. Tales passed down from each generation, showing them to be some of the most influential deities in human history, that continue to have a significant impact to this day. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and for exclusive rewards, check out our Patreon page. That was interesting.
might have to check out another one that's longer. I ain't getting so much details and context I was looking for. But for what it's worth, it was entertainment that had me drawn in, so. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like the video if you like the video. Comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications, DM me the link via X, formerly known as Twitter. Let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about. Follow me on Twitch, Kick, and Rumble. Us versus them, man. I'll see y'all in the next video. I'm out.